is done through a, what's called a two-strand twining technique, um, where we basically are wrapping the warp with the, the weft yarns. And right now I am almost getting to the point where I am going to need to add another yellow weft yarn. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this one, tuck it behind, and then I'm gonna wrap it around the next warp because I'm gonna have to end that and later I will weave it over, weave over it with another weft yarn. And then I'll do the same with this one or I'll go ahead and continue like as though I'm about to weave it, then wrap it around the warp. And then I have already prepared my next weaving strand. Um, a lot of times we do these um, loops um, in order to shorten the length of yarn that we're working with, that way we aren't fidgeting with it too much. And I just wrap it around where I left off and I keep going and I can go ahead and just cinch that back up and then it'll be woven over and fastened in later. So I'm not gonna worry about it too much right now. And this is, in the yellow border, what I am doing is called a, di a diamond eye pattern. And oftentimes, um, this pattern was, it's called a skip stitch pattern. Um, there is a different name for it in basketry, although I don't remember what it's called, but you will see them oftentimes done on along the rim of a spruce root hat. Um, and it might be repeated. So it is kind of, in a way, I think paying homage to um, the basketry methods. And really when I think about it, I'm kind of astonished by a spruce or basketry and you know a lot of the important um, clan atulu or clan objects um, that were created by you know the women were chilcat blankets and then the spruce root hats that oftentimes also had a clan crest painted on it so um, these were really kind of the uh, you know pinnacle of, of the women's art in Clinket society Chilcat weaving and the spruce root hats. And chilcat weaving was often, I think, almost done in a collaborative manner where a man designed the the robe and then, you know, the female weaver adjusted it and, you know, made it weavable. And they weren't necessarily hard and fast designs, and there were plenty of times, plenty of times when a weaver might go in later and you know, change it to make it um, a weavable pattern. I'm getting a little caught up in my warp here, which is fine. It's kind of, it happens sometimes. I'm not going to fit you too much with it right now. But yeah, this is, um, you know, the basic technique, although there are many others associated with it. And right now when I'm working in the yellow border, it's pretty easy for me to just kind of go back and forth, back and forth across the row. And, you know, I can finish a, a row in about, if I'm not being distracted, maybe about 20 minutes to get across the whole thing, sometimes longer. Um, although really, I'm hoping to get to the point where maybe it'll only take me 10 minutes to get across. And, uh, you know, I don't think I quite have the fingering technique down, but this technique was developed by uh, Jenny Clonot, who was one of the last traditional weavers and taught to a variety of others, including um, one of my teachers, Clarissa Rizal, who went on to teach her daughter, Lily Hope, who acted as a, a peer and mentor and guide um, for me later on. This allows us to weave quite a bit faster so we can cover a good amount of distance in a short period of time. And when I kind of open wide like I just did right there, it pushes the previous row up. That way I don't have to go back later and pack it in with like a needle or anything like that. It'll just kind of lie in there just nicely. And um, we use a different type of yarn 
for the most part these days, although there are people out there that spin their own yarns, but this is an S-twist yarn, whereas previously, if one had spun it themselves on either their thigh or with a spindle, a drop spindle, um, it would be a Z-twist, in which case I would use a different um, type of twist for it. Alrighty, and that's the basic two-strand twine. Thank you.